car truck running hotter than normal? You know, the gauge is a little too high? Well, I'm here to tell you what to look for. And maybe the problem is more obvious than you think. So the most obvious part that everybody always says, oh, my car is running a little hotter than normal, or even if it got to overheating point, they always go, oh, change your thermostat. Well, that is the obvious, but it's not always the answer. And the reason for that is, is that any car from 2000 and up will set an engine code, PO128, and it says thermostat situation is not reading, reaching normal temperature or above temperature. If you don't have an engine light on, but you've noticed your gauge is running hotter, well, other than the obvious, bad thermostat, which you don't want to go through the trouble of changing if it's good, right? I want to give you some visuals to check real quick so that you don't put in parts you don't need. And we'll go down the list. And I'm going to pick next the obvious. I'm going to go to the radiator. And I'm going to show you what to look for in that radiator. Maybe it's clogged. You open your radiator when it's cold, and the coolant's right at the top level. But yeah, that gauge is running hotter than normal. Hmm. So let's start with the fins, clogged fins. Fins missing. There's a whole bunch of stuff to look for there. So this is a brand new radiator that I got from 1AAuto.com that I'm going to be putting in this truck. That's how big it is. It's pretty large. So you have your top radiator hose, lower radiator hose, and here's all the coolant fins. These little fins are meant for the air to flow through and cool the coolant that's in the tubes going back and forth, right? Well, what if these fins are rotted or missing? Do you think they're going to cool down that coolant? Probably not. And here's an example. Now, granted, that's not for this truck, but holy moly, look at this. <laughs> I'm not lying. I don't think there's any fins left, except for this right here. You can see it. These are all gone. There is nothing left to this radiator. This car would cause a running temperature problem, meaning running hotter than normal, because there's no way this cooled down. There's no way. So this is what to visually look for. Find the location of your radiator, which is always in the front 90% of the time. You can look through the grill, get yourself a little flashlight, and look in there. Now, how could I have pre-maintenance this on my car? What I would have done is every six months, I would have managed to tell myself, get the garden hose take the front of the car and rinse that out. And you'll see sand and dirt, even pollen, all depends on where you're located, running all over the ground. And what happens when that stays in there, the sand stays in there and everything, it just rots those aluminum little fins. They just rot right out. So make it pre-maintenance every six months, even 90 days. Do it with the garden hose at home. Spray it really hard. It's okay. You can go it's hard pressure. That would keep that radiator going smoothly. Now, another problem would be on the inside, a clogged fin. You don't have circulation, you're going to get overheating. Partial clogged is going to cause running hotter than normal. So look for outside obvious reasons and maybe you need a radiator. That's another one to put on your list. Another thing to look for, water pump, surf belt tensioner, and surf belt itself. A lot of times this is overlooked, way overlooked, because no one thinks of the obvious. They think of real deep, important things like a thermostat. But if that belt is slipping on that water pump, which spins the water pump, the propellers inside are not spinning properly, guess what? The coolant's not flowing fast enough, and it makes it run a little hotter than normal. So you always want to check your tensioner. If you have it one with a tensioner, grab that surf belt and pull up on it. You want to see if that belt holds tension, or if it's too fast, the spring just goes whoop, whoop, or it just wobbles. Run it. Start it up and run it. Pay attention to that tensioner. If that spring is weakened on this inside, that thing is going to bounce all around. And you might hear a squeak, especially in the morning when you first set up the car. You might hear a squeak. Now, if you have a surf belt, man, you should never hear a squeak. They don't squeak unless there's a problem. Oil, coolant, or too loose. That's it. That's when they squeak. So my favorite part of a car that can cause overheating is a fan clutch because it's overlooked so much. Not everyone knows how to diagnose them or what they do. They just know they're there or they don't even know they're there because they're hidden pretty well in front of the fan blade. If you're looking from here, you see a fan, that's it. Inside that shroud, that's where this thing's hiding because it takes the temperature of that area, tightens up that coil and makes that fan firmer so it blows air on the radiator and cools down the coolant. If this is bad, you have to test it. It's very easy, you take the fan blade, three and nine o'clock and you turn back and forth. You're gonna get a little movement like this, that's normal. But if you have a lot of movement, 
this, the bearing inside is gone. So therefore it's not doing its job. It's not cooling down that radiator coolant. You need to replace it. Something else about fan clutches, in order to change them, you really should get a pneumatic tool that is designed just to take those fan clutches out. Uh, if you don't have it, you can buy it off the internet, but if you don't have it, because you're going to need an air chisel and compressor, um, you can try a pry bar, hammer, and a very large wrench. The wrench has to fit the size of the fan clutch, which is sometimes a lot of them are anywhere from, this is a 24 millimeter, so they're up there in size, one and one sixteenth, one and one eighth. They can be pretty large, but the pneumatic set usually always comes with all of them, and they're nice and thin, so you can fit it through and uh, take that fan clutch right off with ease. And don't forget to check out our website to look for the pneumatic tool that you're going to need to do a fan clutch. We sell it, and it uh, makes the job a whole lot easier. And as a bonus little thing, I want to talk about an ECT sensor, which is electronic coolant temp sensor. Now, these actually break a lot, or the connectors get a little corroded, or they just plain out fail. And you might get a check engine light, you should get a check engine light. But maybe if you have a gauge, you're going to have it running either pegged out too hot or pegged out too cold. It never changes. This could be definitely the culprit. Instead of checking that thermostat and tearing it apart and finding out whether it opens or closes, check your connector on this and just find the location. Let's see if it's corroded and maybe one of those terminals are broken inside there. Ours is pretty easy. It's located right here in the thermostat housing. And I know it's bad because, well, came in like this. <laughs> it plain out doesn't work. It's gone. Someone hit it, broke the plastic connector right off. So my gauge on this truck reads zero all the time. So that's going to be a problem. So don't overlook an ECT sensor. It could be a culprit that is easily fixed. So that pretty much wraps up the video about pre-maintenance if you're coolant is running hotter than normal. Now, not overheating, that's a whole different video. That's talking about cars that have coolant loss, where it's either on the ground or it's steaming out. Maybe you have a bad head gasket, a leaky hose, even a bad radiator cap. This is about just noticing that your gauge is running a little warmer than usual. So it's kind of like a warning device that it could get worse if you let it go. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.